Welcome to TransLogic. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Maybe if you had on your checklist today to fly in a sailplane over the heartland of Texas, you'd be like me, checking that off. Because that's where I am. And this is awesome. Oh, this is what it's like to be a kite, actually. Yeah, exactly, very close this to it. This is how a kite feels. I feel like, okay, we're definitely off the ground right now. We are off the ground. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Oh. I'm actually not flying, see? No hands, no. That would be Terry right behind me. There's Terry. We're on the hunt for thermals. Essentially, the sun heats the earth, thus warms the air that is near the earth. As hot air rises, we kind of surf that a little bit, right? That's correct, yeah. We're going to find the rising air. Sometimes we can find that going straight forward. Sometimes we can find it only when we stop and circle. Okay. All right, so we're here at the Texas Soaring Association. I'm with Terry. He's a sailplane pilot. Terry, thanks for being with us. Bradley. So tell me a little bit about the history of this. Uh, is this from Icarus, or where, where well, did we go? <laughs> well, certainly that's the mythological basis right. for it. Actually, Orville and Wilbur recognized the potential for soaring right off the bat. There's notations that say, we notice that when the wind dies, the birds still climb. Roll forward a bunch of years and technology and more technology and computers and carbon fiber and lo and behold you get these modern wonderful ships that we have today. Yeah. This glider is a 60 foot wingspan, has a glide ratio of about 45 to 1. For every foot high I can go forward 45 feet. If I'm 5,280 feet off the ground, a mile. I can go 45 miles before I touch the ground. All right, so we just disconnected from the plane, and now, wow, it's really smooth right now. What your viewers can see is my hands are off the stick. Oh, I can't see that. That's <laughs> yeah. interesting. Okay. So, here, I can make some noise. Okay. These planes are so stable, I'm actually feeling bumps and whether it lifts a wing or whether it doesn't lift a wing, and that tells me where a thermal is. Ah, we just jumped up, 1773 yeah. to 88, 89. 1801, moving on up. And to you viewers at home, this is a harness. This <laughs> is a parachute. <laughs> Safety doesn't take a holiday, you know what I mean? Today with thermals and with lift sources, we're sort of finding our trade winds. There are technologies on the horizon. We could just look down at a map and say, oh, here they are, I'll fly to those. Okay. As long as I keep flying through lift, I'm making progress that direction and yeah. I'm not falling out of the sky. I think the world of taking 400 people from place to place yeah. is a long way away. Yeah. But doing it with four or six is practical today almost. Yeah. You could just fly hundreds of miles, no fuel, not even a drop. Wow. All right, here we go. Well, that's it for our day with the sailplanes. We're going to be landing it now. The potential for what this could be transportation-wise, maybe not on a huge scale, but certainly on a small scale for a number of people. The idea of a solar-powered plane that reuses its own energy and solar energy all put together is pretty doggone fantastic. And here we are, just touching down, taking it easy. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. We'll see you next week.